Hello everyone. In this OpenShot tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add video captions and subtitles using the built-in caption tool. As an exercise, we are going to add some captions and subtitles to this video project. It's a daunting prospect. Certainly not for the faint-hearted. Where the caption video will look like this. It's a daunting prospect. Certainly not for the faint-hearted. These captions the and subtitles are embedded in the video, as opposed to being loaded by the video player from a subtitle file. And just to show you one of the many things that OpenShot's caption tool can do, I also make the second caption slowly turn red as it is being shown. Alright, so here I have set up a project of a single track containing two video clips, which I cut from this video. As I've shown you just now, these video clips have already got a voiceover embedded in them. So to add captions to this video, the first step is to show the audio waveforms of the clips. To do that, right-click the clip, select Display, and then click Show Waveform. With the audio waveforms are now shown, we should be able to identify the clips that contain dialogue or voiceover, as well as the start and end points of each line of dialogue or voiceover. The next step is to add a caption effect to each clip that needs to be captioned. To do that, simply click and drag the caption effect to the clip. A small effect icon will appear at the top left corner of the clip, and a line of text will also be shown on the video preview panel. If you don't see this line of text on the video preview, make sure that the playhead is over the caption clip. Now if you click the caption icon, the captions editor panel will be shown on the right side of the window. And as you can see here, OpenShot gives us an example of caption with its start and end timestamps. Now let's go back to the clip. Right click the caption icon and then click properties to show the properties editor panel. Once the properties panel is visible, we can toggle between the clip and the caption properties simply by clicking the clip or the caption icon. The next step is to edit the style of the captions through the caption properties editor, such as the font type and size, the text background, and so on. But please remember that, most of these properties are keyframe properties, meaning that they are animatable. Therefore, before editing any of these caption properties, unless you really want to animate the caption, please make sure that the playhead is positioned at the start of the clip, or at most before the start of the first caption of that clip. So now let's style this caption, starting with changing the font type. Double click the font property to open the change font dialog. On the change font dialog, I'll change the font type to Arial and leave the style regular. Please take note that the font size setting on this dialog has no effect, so I'll just click OK. To change the font size, click and drag the font size value slider until you get the preferred size. Or if you've already got a font size in your mind, simply double click the value slider and then key in the desired size. To change the text color, Double click the color property to open the color selection dialog. You can pick your preferred color either from the basic colors table or from the color space or key in the RGB values of the desired color. For this exercise, I'll keep the text color white, so I just click cancel. The next caption styling properties that I want to edit are the background properties. To add a background to the text, set the background alpha to a non-zero value. As you can see here on the video preview, a background with default styling appears behind the text. To change the background color, double click the background property to open the change color dialog. To adjust the background's corner radius, change the background corner radius properties value. And then if you prefer narrower padding around the text, you can change the background padding's value to a smaller one. Now let's adjust the position of the text on the screen so that it doesn't distract the video viewing. To adjust the text position, we can play with the left, right, and the top size properties. But before I show you how those properties affect the text position on the screen, let me first make this caption longer so that it spans over two lines. Alright, so the left size property will control the left margin of the text while the right size property will control the right margin. To make the text center aligned horizontally, we have to set these two properties to the same value. Likewise, to adjust the text's vertical position, 
you can play with the top size property. Okay, in addition to these styling and positioning properties, we can also add fade in and fade out effects to the captions. By default, OpenShot adds 0.35 second fade in and fade out effects to the captions. You can play with these properties if you prefer longer or shorter effects. For this exercise, I'll just leave these properties at their default values. Alright, so basically that's how we style the video captions. You can try out other remaining properties such as the border, the stroke width, and the font alpha properties on your own. Now let's move on to the most important part of captioning a video in OpenShot, which is to add the captions that sync with the dialogue or the voiceover in the video nicely. To do that, we're going to use the captions editor and the playhead as the main tools. But before we start doing that, let's play the video clip one more time to see where each voiceover line is in the clip's waveform. It's a daunting prospect. Certainly not for the faint-hearted. So for the first video clip, we have a sentence that's broken into two parts by a pause in the middle of the sentence. For this kind of scenario, we're going to treat them as two separate captions, as shown by the waveform here. So to add these captions, first and foremost, make sure the caption effect of the clip is active, which is indicated by the properties panel showing the caption properties. Then, remove whatever text the captions editor currently contains. After that, position the playhead right before the start of the waveform of the voiceover line to be captioned. This is when the audio waveform becomes very useful as the playhead's positioning guide. Now go to the captions editor and click the insert timestamp button. OpenShot will insert the playhead's current position as the start time of the caption to be added. The format of this timestamp is hours, minutes, seconds and milliseconds. But as you can see here, the timestamp is not actually the playhead's position at the timeline ruler, which is roughly at the one second mark of the clip. Instead, it is the playhead's position at the original video from which the clip is cut. If I click the clip and show its properties, you will see that the start property of this clip has a value of 39.5 second, which means that the clip starts from the 40th second mark of the original video. That's why the start time of the caption is set to about 40.5 seconds. For most cases, this shouldn't be a problem. It will only become a problem if you want to convert the captions you create in OpenShot into a subtitle file, where the timestamp should be based on the playhead's position at the timeline ruler. But don't worry, I'll show you how to get around this problem later. So for now, let's just accept whatever timestamps OpenShot inserts into the captions editor. The next step is to set the end time of the caption. To do that, go to the timeline and move the playhead to the end of the waveform. The easiest way to do it is to just play the video and stop it at it's the end of the voice. Prospect. Please remember that, if you add fade out effect to your captions, you may need to position the playhead a few frame after the end of the waveform. Now go back to the captions editor and click the insert timestamp button. OpenShot will use the playhead's current position as the end time of the caption and automatically insert it after the arrow sign. Once we have inserted the start and end times, simply type in the caption for that dialog or voiceover line. Repeat these steps to add the remaining captions for this clip. Certainly not for the faint-hearted. Okay, now let's play the video clip to see how our captions look like. It's a daunting prospect. Certainly not for the faint-hearted. Alright, essentially that's how we add captions to a video in OpenShot. To caption the second video clip, or any remaining clips in the project for that matter, we basically just repeat the same steps. Except that this time we do not need to redo the caption styling anymore. We can just link the second clip's caption to that of the first clip to make it inherit all the styling we set up earlier. To show you what I mean, let's start by adding a caption effect to the second clip. And now before I continue working on the second clip's captions, let's quickly go back to the first clip and show its caption properties. This caption has an ID of UH8L something, and this ID is the one that we'll need later to link the second clip's caption to this one. So now click the second clip's caption effect icon to show its caption properties. Then right click the parent property 
select clips, then select the first clip, and finally click the first clip's caption ID. As you can see here on the properties panel, the second caption now automatically inherit all the properties values of its parent, which we set up earlier. Furthermore, any changes we make on the first clip's caption properties will be automatically propagated to all its children. However, any changes we make on a child's properties will not affect its parent or its siblings. Now if I click the caption effect icon one more time, it will refresh the caption's editor content. And as you can see here, the second caption effect also inherits the captions of the first one. So to add the captions to the second clip, first we have to clear the captions editor. Now we can simply repeat the same steps we did earlier to add the captions. Okay, now let's play the second video clip to see the result. Their mother shows them the best route. She has done it hundreds of times before. But for the kids, this is new territory. Alright, so that's how easy it is to add captions to a single video track project. But before I continue to the next part, I'd like to mention that, as of the version 3.1, the caption properties inheritance has one little bug. If I export this video, the second clip's caption will fail to inherit the font size property value from its parent and use the default size of 30. To fix this problem, first position the playhead at the start of the second clip. Then on the second clip's caption properties, right-click the font size property and then click insert keyframe. You can repeat these steps on other properties if they fail to inherit their parents' values. All right, now let's dive into more specific cases where adding captions becomes a little trickier. The first case is when we need to add both captions and subtitles in another language at the same time. This is still very easy to do, as OpenShot allows multiple caption effects on the same clip. The only thing that we need to pay attention to is the styling and positioning of the subtitles. They should be visually distinct from the captions and does not distract the video viewing. As an example, let's add German subtitles to the first video clip. So first I'll add another caption effect to the clip. And then make sure the playhead is positioned at the start of the clip before setting any of the caption properties. So for these German subtitles, I'll use the default font type and set its size to 12. And then I'll change the text color to blue and place it on top of a white background. As for its vertical position, I'll place it above the caption. And then to add the subtitles, just copy the English captions we've added just now to get the exact same timestamps. After that, simply replace the captions with their German translations. Okay. Now let's play the first video clip and see the result. It's a daunting prospect. Certainly not for the faint-hearted. Alright, the next special case is when we have multiple video tracks in the project. For example, let me add a new track above this video track, and then add a video clip that serves like a legend. Now if I play this video, my caption Certainly will be partially covered by the video layer above it. So based on this scenario, one of the rules of adding captions in OpenShot is that they have to be placed on the topmost layer or track. But for this kind of setup, adding the caption to the topmost track is not possible either, as it will be displayed in the legend instead of in the main screen. So what do we do? The solution to this problem is adding a dedicated captions track as the topmost track of the project. This solution is actually very neat and elegant as the captions or subtitles will be completely separate from the video and audio tracks. In addition, it will also solve the timestamp mismatch issue at once. To add a dedicated captions track, first we'll need to create a blank image with transparent background of type PNG or SVG. Luckily in OpenShot, creating this blank transparent image is very easy and requires a few clicks only. To do that, go to the menu bar, click Title and then click Title Submenu. On the Title dialog, select any of the gold title templates from the template list on the left. Then type in the file name and clear the line columns. Click Save to create the blank image. 
Now go to the Project Files panel and drag the blank transparent image we created just now to the captions track. And then set its clip's duration to match the project's duration. Now as you can see here on the preview panel, this track has no effect at all to other tracks below it. To use this track as a captions track, simply add a caption effect to the image clip, and then do the same steps as we did just now to add the captions. It's a daunting prospect. Certainly not for the faint-hearted. So as you can see here, with this dedicated captions track, our captions become very neat as we only need to manage one captions effect for all the captions, regardless of the number of video clips we have in our project. Alright, so roughly that's how we add captions to a video under different scenarios. I hope you find this tutorial useful, and thank you for watching.